I talked to my wife, and you know, she was, you know, she went through, she was a Navy brat, so she uh, kind of moved around all over the place. But where she went to uh, high school and then college was in Mississippi. And the joke was like, when for a, a girl to go to college, you're getting an MRS degree, a Mrs. degree, meaning you're going there to find your husband so that he can take care of you. And this is my mom. Like, so it's funny because this is my wife, right? Born in 1984. Like, this is like current people dealing with this idea that your self-worth and your, what you're going to do in your life is become a wife and raise children and that is your, your the definition of who you are and who you're going to be. And this is how her mom was raised. That's my point is like that was my wife telling me that and but I look at my mom and so look how long that has been you know been promoted and pervasive in our society of like this is the definition of what a woman is. And my mom was like literally told by her mom and dad, my grandmother, grandfather, like, you do not have to worry about school. You need to figure out how to like make a family and provide for the home and take care of children. Other don't worry, like you don't need finances. You don't need to worry about like where money's gonna come. You don't need to know about like your gift or any of that. It was all you're gonna find a man who's gonna take care of you. You're gonna find a rich man that's gonna take care of you, <laughs> is what it was. I mean, that's what, that's what she was told. You, you'll, you'll find a rich man who will take care of you. And that's her, uh, her our grandmother, that's, that was her experience. So obviously she's gonna teach her daughter the same experience she lived, right? She, she met my grandfather who, was, who, was, uh, who came to the United States with nothing, built a, a, a business, a multi-million dollar business, which was really successful back in the day uh, and she was in love with another man and chose my grandfather because of his financial position Cri told stories where she cried at her wedding cried at her wedding because of this I the, the idea that this is what it meant for you and this is what you need to prioritize is make sure you're safe and secure that means Make sure you're marrying someone who has money that can take care of you, not the person you love. Yeah. So this is there's a I, our point with that is to piggyback off what Jess is saying is that there's a there's still a lingering, if not a you know a, a momentum of this is what it means for you to be a woman or for us to be a man or that's I, I'm I'm happy because I feel like even your comment says it and you all being here says it that that's bullshit it's total bullshit and you're not buying into it anymore but there's still regardless of man woman any gender there's still the challenge of like what is it that I'm called to do what is it that I love what is it what is my gift no matter what society's norms say no because, matter what yeah because even if it's not like this is who you should be we have parents who benignly with not and not, not being malevolent at all said oh this is your gift you can't make money dancing you can't make money playing music you can't make money doing that you need to choose a secure safe job that will provide X Y and Z because this is what it means they're saying it as advice that they they just didn't that's that was their idea that was their paradigm and so I think we're like to kind of normalize this for everyone not just man woman that we're all in some way shape or form like uh, steered into a direction in our lives that may not have been what our hearts, where our hearts wanted to go. Yeah, and so it's, it's challenging. So this, so sometimes this chapter in that book is, is, is challenging because, you know, if you're, if you're not in that place where you're, you're in a place where you're like, man, I'm doing something that I don't feel called to do, then it kind of leaves you in this, like, in the desert wondering which direction to take and where do I go. Hopefully, like our idea too in, in this training, not just if it's not yoga teaching, but it's you know, through meditation and through asana and through quieting the mind and really feeling like and owning who you are. If it's not yoga or anything like that, like what we're teaching in, in like the <clears throat> asana base, it's gonna help you get more connected to that intuitive spirit, that spark of passion that you may have had at a younger stage of your life. Or maybe it's like, man, I'm reinventing myself now. I want to, what, what do I want to do? And then the, the, the beauty of it is you can do anything. Literally, like anything. Like we live in such a, like, <clears throat> such a, a, a unique uh, time in history because of the possibilities and the potential we have specifically because of the internet, because of like this knowledge, because of like, like the, what's, what's accessible at our fingertips. 
literally anything you want to find out about, like, like people that have worked their whole lives in one area that you can then like hack into and like just research and read their books and look at their blogs and re listen to their podcasts and glean that information. Like my point is, like it's all, it's unlimited. The only thing that will then limit us is our personal belief systems. And this is why meditation is so important. This is why yoga is so important because that's just a personal, personal decision to say. No. Now let me say this. I'm not going to go win Wimbledon. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Right? I just said like everything is possible, right? And I'm now saying there's a limitation to what I'm willing, because what, what I could say is like I could invest time and energy. Like I could start training my ass off in tennis that I've never played before <laughs> with this idea that like I may one day win Wimbledon at like 48. <laughs> Don't they like stop playing at 40? <laughs> like Pete Sampras or somebody was like the oldest dude to ever win or something like that. But my point is the time and energy it would take for me to invest in something like that is like I would like have to divorce my wife, like be the, like an estranged father. Like they would never see me for this idea of like these guys. What I'm saying, like, is it's possible, but it takes time, it takes energy, it takes a level of commitment to start moving in that direction. Which means for me, that shit's not on the table. <laughs> it's, like, it's not Wimbledon, it's not football, it's not basketball, and none of those sports are in. But there are things that I love to do that I will, I am going to invest my time and energy in. That is aligned with my gift because that's. And what, this is the last thing I'll say because I want to rant is um, <laughs> when you feel it and it's like you're calling, you have so much passion that you have so much energy and you have the motivation that you will, you will put the time and the energy that it takes to move in that direction tirelessly because you feel it. And you don't have that if it's something that you're not super passionate about. You're like, oh, yeah, hmm. But when you have it and you have that spark, all of a sudden, like you'll you know do whatever it takes, like however long it takes to make it happen. It's the power of purpose. It's because emotion drives behavior. We've talked about this, right? When we have purpose, we have you know we can have a a a, a, a goal, an objective, a, a vision, but if there's not a strong enough purpose behind it, meaning there's not a strong enough emotion behind it, when it gets the going gets tough, and it will as you start to move in that direction, you'll quit. You'll give up on it. So the, 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 the biggest piece of, of achieving our dreams, whatever your dream is now and what you see, is the emotional uh, drive behind it, the emotional spark, the purpose. Why? Why do you want that? Right? What is your dharma and then why do you want your dharma? What's it, what's it mean to you? What's the meaning behind it? If there's a big enough purpose, it doesn't matter what barrier gets thrown in front of you, you will find your way around it, over it, dig a, a, a tunnel underneath it, whatever, you'll get around it. Uh, you'll keep moving and keep doing it. And so, the, so the, what, where Chris is going with this is just vital. Right? We have to have that emotional, emotional piece, that purpose. That gives us the drive.